David Brooks, can he get Bournemouth off to a positive start in this shootout? It will be left-footed against his Welsh international colleague Wayne Hennessy. And Brooks finds the bottom left corner with a smart spot kick, even though the keeper went the right way. No problems there, kept it hard and low, Brooksy. Well, Luka Milivojevic will be making his way forward next for Crystal Palace to try and level it up immediately. Remember last season, Cherry saved all the penalties fired at them by Forrest Green. Can Azmir Begovic possibly repeat the heroics of Mark Travers as Milivojevic, the Serb, up against the Bosnian Begovic? Here he comes now, right-footed, and it's 1-1 as Milivojevic confidently slots it into the bottom right. Yeah, that was a pretty positive penalty, wasn't it? Hard and low, almost in the side netting. Even if you go the right way, unlikely you're going to save that one. Sam Surridge will go next for the Cherries away to our right. Had a bright game this evening. Again, uh, good willingness in industry and made some good runs as the out-and-out out striker had the ball in the net earlier on of course ruled offside possibly wrongly can he put the ball in the net now when it counts legally for the cherries to put them ahead in the shootout he does good penalty to the left hand side this time Hennessy went the wrong way cherries 2-1 up after taking two yeah nice pen by Sam firmly hit do you like it when the ball hits that side net and usually means the keepers got pretty much no chance Mishi Batshuayi will stroll forward for Palace, way to our right, back on loan from Chelsea of course, and he's down the pecking order, didn't have too many opportunities himself in the game to worry Asmir Begovic, so Palace so far 100% both teams, this to level it up at 2-2 after two each, Batshuayi against Begovic, and this time Begovic goes the right way, but again it's a very good penalty, you've got to say, four very good penalties all round below. Well again, that one's hit the side net, and even Begovic picked the right corner to go for, but you just can't get near it. So Batshuayi will be replaced by Billing, who level at 2-2, Cherries have got that advantage first of all of course don't forget Palace were eliminated on penalties last season by lower league opposition Colchester after a 0-0 draw also in the second round Cherries came out the right side of a shootout after a 0-0 draw in the second round can Billing give them the advantage again here with his left foot and then excellent penalty from Billing lashes it into the bottom right corner absolutely these are high class penalties I don't know I hear uh, somebody asking, is it, is it different taking penalties with no crowd there? Andros Townsend will come forward now for Crystal uh, Palace. Way to our right. So, 3-2 the Cherries lead. No advantage either way at the moment. Nothing to choose between these two sides as Begovic gives the crossbar in the net. One last rattle. Townsend waits for it to settle down and he finds the corner as well. Begovic once more going the right way but unable to do anything about it. 3-3 three, three after three each. Yeah, not quite as firm as some of the other penalties but he still found the bottom corner. Townsend. Cherry's captain Lloyd Kelly. Taking the op opportunity and the responsibility away to our right here. Manchester City, remember, awaits next weekend. Uh, sorry, next Thursday, I should say. Here's Kelly then with the armband on with the Cherries fourth. Everyone has scored so far. Kelly scores, keeps that run going. 4 3 Bournemouth, having taken one more. The, the best seven penalties I've seen for ages. Keepers haven't had a prayer. They, well, they so can't far, get near they? them. They, they, they're right in the corner, hitting the side netting. And they've got pace on them as well. Ebere Eze will come forward next for Crystal Palace. We're getting towards crunch time now because outside the top five, there's one or two in this Cherries team who won't have taken a lot of penalties in a pressure situation like this before. 
But Ebere Eze up against Begovic to level it at 4-4 after four for Crystal Palace. Eze takes his time, takes a deep breath, a couple of steps to the side, a couple of little feints, and then rolls it and somehow finds the corner. How did that get in? Begovic in the end almost apologetically escorted it into the corner. I've got to say, Eze, that is the coolest one you like. It's one of those where you can easily look silly, but he found the net. 4-4. Four, four. Dear me. Never I still it. thought Begovic was going to save it. Well, I did too. It, it didn't look like it had that much pace on it, neither. The fifth penalty comes from Bournemouth's Dom Solanke then. 4-4, four, four, four each taken. The final of the regular takers. Solanke up against Hennessy. Still not a blot on anyone's copybook here at the Vitality Stadium. Solanke, short steps, finds the bottom corner again, and Hennessy again goes the right way. And the keepers are wondering, what do we have to do here? We're going the right way, but we still can't get near any of them. Well, they've all been excellent penalties. Apart from that little hop step and a jump, running up to the ball. Not sure about that one. So 5-4 Bournemouth lead, the final Palace penalty of this regular part of the shootout will come from Jordan Ayew, the Ghanaian leading scorer last season, came on as a substitute this evening, has to score, otherwise Bournemouth are off to the Etihad next Thursday. Begovic stands in his way. Jordan Ayew with a relatively short run up, three or four steps, here he comes and he finds the corner as well. And we have a full house willow, 10 out of 10, 5-5, five, five, and we move to sudden death. Yeah, this is where it gets interesting. People who didn't run it really want to take a penalty are being forced into it now. Jack Simpson, next. So, where were you on the penalty taker roster, Willow? About number 10? I'd be about three more and you'd get to me. <laughs> Desperation measures. Well, Jack yeah. Simpson, number six on the roster. Everyone has scored so far. Somebody eventually will miss. Let's hope it's not Jack Simpson right now. We're into sudden death then. Here he comes, Jack Simpson, and he's scored as well. A sort of penalty that a centre forward would be happy with. Bottom right. That's very good. Had a good game, Jack, as well. Just captures his performance, that one, hard and low into the bottom left-hand corner. You haven't got anywhere to be tomorrow, have you? Because we might still be here. Max Meyer will come next. We are starting to get... I mean, if we get to the goalkeepers, and I can't remember a shootout for a long time that's had the goalkeepers taking them as the 11th taker. You see some smart Alec goalkeepers who get themselves earlier in the order, don't you? Very confident. Anyway, here comes Max Meyer for Palace. Simple scoreline, has to score, has to keep Palace in it by beating Begovic, which he does as well, to the left-hand side of the goal as Begovic this time goes the wrong way. And already into his walk forward is Dan Gosling. Yeah, would have thought Dan might have been in the original five, takes responsibility, bit of a leader. So we're up to number seven in the order of the 11 who finished this game. What's the record for the most amount of penalties taken? I mean, I haven't got that. I just have not got that stat for you. <laughs> I thought you were penalty organised. I haven't got it. I just haven't got that, I'm Kane. <laughs> No, he won't be able to find that either. Anyway, Dan Gosling. It's 6-6. Six, six. Both teams have had six. Cherries are taking first. So Gosling to restore the advantage. And it, oh, the Palace players, as it goes into the back of the net, the Palace players were celebrating, jumping around. They thought Hennessy had saved it. Off the goalkeeper's fingertips, onto the post, and into the net. Well... That was it. Oh no, not on the poster, it was the goalkeeper's flat hand, I thought it hit the post. Well, it went in. <laughs> 48 penalties is the record. And then Nambian cut. The Namibian cut, that's got to be. 48 Namibian. penalties. So Gosling scored, he was a bit lucky. Palace thought Pen uh, Hennessy had saved it. Now here is Mamadou Sacco who has to score. 7-6 Bournemouth lead. Here's the substitute Sacco and he scores with his left foot into the high side of the left end edge of the net. 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, that was getting into the realms of top top corner there. Another good penalty. Jefferson Lerma scored on Saturday here, opening his account for the season. Cool as a cucumber normally, Jefferson. Apart from when he's getting hot under the collar, of course. 
Keith Stroud, the referee, underarms the ball to Jefferson Lerma. I've been pleased to see no messing about from the goalkeepers either. They just both get him straight back on their line. None of this kidology. Hennessy stands big with his arms up. Jefferson Lerma, 7-7 in the shootout to put Bournemouth in front once again. And he scores as well into the right-hand side of the goal. These, they must have been pen practicing penalties all in lockdown. Do you know what? I have to say, because there isn't a crowd behind the goal, I think that makes a difference. Yeah, there's no, the, 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 the hard bit comes when you've got 30,000 behind the goal and you've got to take a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly does. So here comes Martin Kelly with Palace's eighth. We really are starting to get towards the guys who wouldn't really want to be taking them. And again, the equation as it has been for the last three penalties is that Palace have to score. Martin Kelly against Begovic with Palace's eighth. Top corner from Martin Kelly. Top left corner. Unbelievable standard. Eight, eight. Well, the goalkeepers are both, I would say, three quarters picked the, the, the right way to go, but the ball has just been too firmly hit or too high in the net to get a hand on it. Well, there are three penalty takers left for the Cherries. The next is Namdi Offerbor, who will take one, still to take one in the team. Asmir Begovic, of course, the keeper, and Jordan Zamora. But this one falls to Namdi Offerbor, the ninth for the Cherries. 8-8 eight, eight it stands. Here's Namdi Offerbor, scores as well. Pleased for him as well, because you don't want it really to be one of the youngsters who makes the faux pas if, it, if one is to come. But Offerbor, that was confident, drove it in. Well, you, you have to remember, Pelé missed the penalty once. I'm sure you missed one once as well. I'm sure yeah. it's easily done. So Palace, their tenth penalty, uh, sorry, ninth penalty, and this is big Ryan Innes, the big centre half, with their ninth. He has to score up against Begovic, and he's put it in the top corner as well, the right top corner with his right foot. Nine nine. Very very confident. Well, here is the Zimbabwean Jordan Zamora. Full 90 minutes on his Bournemouth debut and he has the 10th penalty of this League Cup shootout with the score on the scoreboard away to our right saying 9-9. Nine, nine. So Zamora wearing squad number 33 on his back with his orange boots away to our right in front of the south end with a little posse of cameras and ball boys just away to the left. He is up against Wayne Hennessy. What's the young man got? Here comes Jordan Zamora and he somehow found the net with an unconvincing penalty but he's got it in and Bournemouth have 10. They, they went up again, the, the, the Palace lads, they thought he'd got to, he picked the right way to go. There wasn't a lot of pace on the ball neither, but it crept in. I'm not sure if he had a free shot of goal, he could strike a ball less convincingly again than he did there. Scuffed it with his instep and it bobbled its way, almost apologetically into the corner. So here we go with the final penalty of the outfield players and it's Yaroslav Yak who spots it down. The Polish player away to our right against Begovic. 10-9 to Bournemouth. Are we heading for the keepers or is Begovic going to have a say? He does have a hand, but unfortunately not to stop it going into the net. And it is 10-10 and we're down to the goalkeepers, John Williams. Yeah, he did get a hand on it. Well, Could I've got to say, keep it out? I don't think I've ever been at a shootout that's had the keepers taking them after a full house of 10 each. Nobody has missed. We've had 20 successful penalties. Bournemouth Palace, if you're just tuning in, in the second round of the Carabao Cup, the first goalkeeper will be Asmir Begovic of Bournemouth against his opposite number. Right foot, it goes for power. Hennessy saves it. Well, Asmir Begovic just went with the kitchen sink there rather than any kind of placement. And Hennessy gets right. And he saves it. And Palace have the advantage. And the Welshman Hennessy can win it. Well, that's kind of unfortunate because he got a, it was a good strike, but once it's off the ground, most of the other penalties, if they weren't in the bottom corner, they were in the top corner. And that little two foot height always gives a keeper a chance. So Asmir Begovic and his first Bournemouth game for 18 months or so now has to make up for it by saving the one from his opposite number. Hennessy, oh, he's nearly gone out of the stadium! A disastrous penalty from Hennessy! He missed by almost a whole postcode over the bar! Absolute disaster!
and it remains 10-10 and we're coming round again with David Brooks back for a second go <laughs> that, did he go out the ground nearly <laughs> on the beach look out <laughs> that was miles over the bar goodness me I think he forgot he'd put concrete in his boots before he took that one I've never been at a shootout where it's gone round for a second time so David no, Brooks is no, back no, me neither there's people on the halfway line putting their boots back on David Brooks then so everybody except the keeper scored and then the keepers both missed so here's David Brooks 10-10 if you're still keeping count Brooks left footed scores again in the top corner another excellent penalty from David Brooks 11-10 to Bournemouth absolutely fantastic penalty by Brooks he smashed it high into the top corner no goalkeepers getting that one goodness me well the bloke with the pre pre drawn out penalty chart I mean my notes have been absolute ribbons here I've now got a second column going anything could happen here 11-10 to Bournemouth and of course we remain in sudden death so Milivojevic comes forward for his second penalty and he has to score to keep Bournemouth I'm sorry to keep Palace in it here we go the 24th penalty for Milivojevic it's all over Begovic has saved it to his left hand side a good strong hand from the big goalkeeper who thought he'd blown it a moment ago when he missed his own penalty but he dives to his left he saves Milivojevic's penalty and Bournemouth have beaten Crystal Palace 11-10 on penalty